Good evening. This is Chair Brian Haggerty calling the El Paso Community College Board of Trustees meeting scheduled for March 24th, 2021. Anyone who likes to uh, regard uh, come into the meeting can assess this meeting by a toll free number of 1-844-621-3956. Enter access code 138-412-2241. Please press the hashtag to access the call. And you can also go through the video audio feed found at youtube.com slash go EPCC. And any member of the public who would like to make a comment or question regarding an agenda item can email the comments or questions to the following email address, boardquestions at epcc.edu. All backup and related materials for the meeting can be assessed at the following link epcc.edu slash administration slash board of trustees. I'd like to welcome everyone. Pam, could you please call the roll? Mr. Uxer. Present. Ms. Sanchez. Here. Mrs. Robles. You are muted, Mrs. Robles. Here. Dr. Graham. Here. Ms. Nahera. Ms. Nahera. Ms. Pina. Here. Mr. Haggerty. Here. <coughs> 1.4. Pam. Item 1.4, approval of minutes, February 24th, 2021, Facilities and Finance Committee, and February 24th, 2021, regular. Move to approve. I have a motion. Yes, sir. Can I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Call the question, Pam. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Mrs. Robles. Aye. <coughs> Dr. Graham. Aye. Um, I just received word that uh, Ms. Nahara is uh, going to be joining us a little bit later. Ms. Pena. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. I'd like to welcome all our guests and staff members, uh, Pam 1.6. Open forum at this time, we have not had any requests uh, submitted through the uh, email address. 1.7. Item 1.7, presentations by individuals, groups, and organizations. <laughs> Item 1.7.1, Dr. William Sarata, college president, will recognize individuals who have retired from the college district. Good evening, Chair Haggerty and members of the board. Uh, tonight, I recognize a longstanding employee, uh, Dr. Jaime Farias, Associate Vice President of Workforce and Continuing Education. Dr. Jaime D. Farias has been with El Paso Community College since September 1981, starting as a full-time lab assistant. In 1984, he joined the ranks of the faculty as a developmental education instructor. He served as the instructional coordinator for the Basque Math and Natural Sciences. From 1994 to 1999, he served as the division chair for the Education and Resource Division and was director of Title V from 2003 to 2004. Dr. Farias was appointed as the Dean of Education and Career and Technical Education for the Valle Verde campus from 2004 to 2016. From 2016 until now, Dr. Farias has served as the Associate Vice President for Workforce and Continuing Education. Dr. Farias holds bachelor's and master's degrees in biological sciences from the University of Texas at El Paso and a PhD in higher education administration from New Mexico State University. Additionally, in 2009, 
He received Career Pathways Leadership Certification from the National Career Pathways Network Center for Occupational Research and Development, or CORD, in Waco, Texas. He also received the Developmental, Developmental Education Specialist Certification from the Kellogg Institute at the National Center for Developmental Education from the Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. In 1996, Dr. Farias received the Management Development Program Certificate from the Graduate School of Education at Harvard University and in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Dr. Farias was a member of Class 32 for the Leadership El Paso, a year-long program sponsored by the El Paso Chamber of Commerce. He, part, he participated on the Board of Directors for the Texas Association of College Technical Educators, as well as Vice President for the El Paso Center for Children. Dr. Fadi has participated in the Education and Workforce Development Executive Committee for the El Paso Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Dr. Farias, for your nearly 40 years of service to El Paso Community College. We wish you the best in the next chapter of your life. Make sure, Dr. Sharata, on behalf of the board, our congratulations to uh, this individual and for his great service to the college. Will do, Judge Haggerty. Um, that is all the retirements, uh, and that is sufficient for this evening. We certainly won't miss Dr. Farias. Yep. Hey, Pam, 1.7.2. Uh, Item 1.7.2, optional written report submitted by the presidents of the Classified Staff Association, the Professional Staff Association, the Faculty Association, and the Student Government Association will be read at this time. Uh, we have no reports this evening, um, Chair Haggerty. Item 1.8, communications, none. Item 1.9, Board of Trustees business, none. Item 1.10, board reports. Item 1.10.1, treasurer's report for January 28th, 2021. No action is necessary. Item 1.10.2, president's report. Item 1.10.2.1, Dr. William Sarata, college president, will update the board of trustees and audience on recent events that have transpired at the college to include an update on the COVID-19 pandemic and appropriate actions taken. Chair Haggerty and members of the board, it's always a pleasure to the latest activities of, of my uh, embarking on over the last month. Um, I'll start with a, some larger and then get into a, uh, some of the specifics with regards to the college. I participated in 64 virtual meetings since our last board meeting. Uh, participated in virtual town halls um, at each of our five campuses, as well as the Administrative Services Center. Um, participated in 11 Texas Association of Community College meetings as we prep testimony for the legislative session, including three TAC legislative committee meetings, um, our TAC inaugural business advisory council meeting, uh, the 2021 Texas Higher Education Distinguished Service Award, which was granted to Mr. Richard Castro and El Pasoan, and which I was honored to serve as a speaker for, uh, a TAC special CEOs meeting, uh, a TAC Mexican American Legislative Caucus MALC meeting to review the TAC legislative ask, and then four TAC um, uh, Community College Association of Texas Trustees, as well as the Texas Community College Teachers Association joint meetings. Um, I met with the El Paso delegation and provided an update of our legislative ask and also had a follow-up phone call with Representative Ortega, who serves on the House Higher Education Committee. Uh, participated in four digital Texas steering committee meetings. Uh, participated in the El Paso branch of the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank board meeting. Uh, participated in, in a community college baccalaureate association panel discussion. Uh, participated in the South by Southwest panel discussion uh, entitled From COVID to Social Des Justice Meeting the Moment. Uh, participated in a Brookings webinar, How the COVID-19 Pandemic Has Impacted Higher Education. Uh, participated in Excellency in Education's Texas Briefing on 25 Years of Hispanic Serving Institutions. Uh, we held two COVID meetings with the college COVID team. Um, I was honored to receive um, the American Association of Hispanics in Higher Education, or AHI, the 2021 Community College Award uh, that 
Ahi Community College Award recognizes an individual who has demonstrated excellence in advocacy, teaching, or leadership, and has provided significant contributions to the community college enterprise. Uh, a series of town hall events, as I in indicated earlier, were offered virtually at each of the campus sites on the, from March 8th through the 12th. Approximately 1,000 individuals logged in to hear an update on what is happening at the college. Special thanks go to the staff of Media Services uh, Department for their assistance in broadcasting these events for our employees and our students, as well as to Ms. Pam Payne, who put the presentation together. Um, it was 120 slides, Pam, so I think that was the longest one we've done in quite some time. Um, EPCC hosted the Spring 2021 Counseling Institute on March the 3rd. This virtual event hosted by Mr. Donet Chavez, dual credit and early college high school counseling coordinator, brought together 111 college and high school counselors and administrators to discuss topics relevant to dual credit and early college high school students. Participants learned about the Tejano virtual events and the teacher preparation pathway from EPCC to UTEP. Thank you, Mr. Chavez for coordinating and leading this great event. EPCC also hosted the Spring 2021 Early College High School Leadership Council meeting on March the 9th. Dean Badillo updated the council on enrollment, new early colleges, and current challenges and opportunities. The virtual event was attended by 47 EPCC and ISD administrators. Uh, many thanks to Dean Badillo for the important work that she continues to lead with our ISD partners. Would like to congratulate Mr. Oscar Baeza, head librarian at the Valle Verde Campus Library, who was recently recognized as the 2020 Librarian of the Year by the Border Regional Library Association. Mr. Baeza has been a part of the college family for 20 years, and in 2013, Mr. Baeza was awarded the Librarian of the Year Award from the Reforma, where he currently serves as the national president. This award and recognition is a testament to Mr. Baeza's Baeza's ex expertise, dedication, and impact that he has had at EPCC and in our community. And then finally, the, the EPCC COVID report. Um, as I report monthly to the board, we, we look at um, now six specific metrics. Um, the 14 days of decreasing cases, currently we're averaging 147 cases per day which is down from the two prior two weeks of 212 cases and also down from the preceding two week period, which was averaging 302. This metric is now meeting our benchmark of no more than 212 cases per day. And this two week period is also meeting the daily total of not a single day over 212 cases. So we're seven days into it. And, and this looks very promising. The rolling seven day average is now at 4.27% which is below the 5% goal in order to implement phase one of a return to campus. However, it is the first time the metric is below 5% in the last nine days, and we would need uh, to be at or below 5% for a minimum two week period. The cumulative positivity rate stands at 11.33% today. This is still significantly above the 10% desired rate, but it is absolutely on a downward trajectory. Uh, there were 11 delayed results today, which is not consistent with the recommended four days or less from swab to result. There were seven delayed cases yesterday and three the previous day. However, I would ask the board to reconsider this metric and would remind the board that these metrics were implemented in the spring of 2020, early in the pandemic. We've realized that as vaccinations continue to rise, that delayed cases may, may not have the same level of importance we, we will bring a recommendation to the board in the April meeting of what we what we believe that that should be, uh, but we would ask the board to reconsider that. The infection rate continues to fall and now has consistently been below the expected rate of cases reported daily given our population size. Today, 183 cases were reported, which is significantly below the 212 cases uh, that we expect to be reported for a, a population of our size. Finally, we have now incorporated vaccination rates as our sixth metric. In order to implement phase one of our return to campus plan, we would have to have 25% of the El Paso eligible population fully vaccinated. We're currently at 18.7% as of today. To summarize, we're, we're now meeting the 14 days of decreasing cases, the infection rate, and the seven-day rolling average fell below 5% today. 
In addition, the delayed results have been minimized significantly. Uh, we are now monitoring the seven day rolling average and once it is less than or equal to 5% for at least a, four, a full 14 day period, once the cumulative positivity rate is less than or equal to 10%, we'll be in a position to bring a recommendation to the board for phase one return to campus. Uh, I will continue to keep the board informed on each of the six respective metrics. Uh, I'm hopeful that we will be able to implement phase one uh, in early summer as each of the metrics are absolutely headed in the right direction. Chair Haggerty, that concludes my report and I'm happy to respond to any questions that the board may have. Anybody have any questions for Dr. Sharata? I have a question. You asked, you mentioned that you are wanting the board to recon make some, I guess, um, decisions at the next meeting. Can you just be specific in terms of what you'll be bringing back? And I know you all might not have a recommendation at this point, but what are the items that you'll specifically be asking for the board's direction and or action? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Sanchez, it is specific to um, the delayed uh, test results. So early on, we, we had indicated that we wanted to see no delayed tests. So that was a, a blanket. If you, the county and city data reporting uh, indicates that um, we're, I believe, as of yesterday at about 76% um, that were being uh, tested within that four-day period. Um, we understand that as vaccinations continue to increase, that the level of importance on delayed cases may not be at the same level of import. And so right now, as I look at the data, and I, I will work with the with the COVID team, with Dr. Pena, Ms. Fields, Mr. Flores, um, and Mr. Padilla, and come to a, a consensus. But for instance, there were 11 delayed cases today. There was there was seven yesterday and three the previous day. And when I look at, at the county data, uh, we're actually, we're at 67% within 72%. And right now the daily tests, the daily seven day average of tests are 377. So I'm looking at somewhere between five and 10%, no more than five to 10%. I'll work with the team, Ms. Sanchez, to develop a, a recommendation for the board. Um, to be within that framework as as vaccinations continue to increase. I just don't think it's a realistic um, metric. And my fear or I, what I don't want to do is say to the board that this one metric will be the reason that we don't return to campus. In particular, as we plan a 50% a uh, of face-to-face -face courses for the fall semester this, this summer, uh, we are going to continue in a, in a majority virtual uh, environment for our courses. Given the fact that we had to plan that way back in, in the early spring, we believe it's the right thing to do and continue. But by fall, we believe we'll be in a position to bring back 50% of our courses in a face-to-face -face format, 50% online. And I guess, Dr. Sadatha, on that, in terms of the 50-50% for the fall, that's at this point, right? I mean, is there an opportunity as we continue to go on and we know that the vaccinations have been opened up to all adults in Texas starting next week. So I think that'll definitely change the number where we're at. Um, could it be the case then maybe as we move along that that may move, right? That we're not looking at 50-50, perhaps it'll be a higher percentage of return to, to campus. Is that yes, fair to say? It is fair and we will continue to monitor it. Uh, we just needed to be able to plan um, as we were moving forward. So at the February meeting, we brought a recommendation of 50% face-to-face and 50% online. As we continue to, to, to see the data and to also see the student, uh, the student voting patterns, if you will, and how they're registering and which courses they're registering for. So if students, if we see a high demand for more face-to-face, -face, then we will obviously adjust accordingly. Um, just based on the data that we're seeing. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Okay, Pam, 1.11. Um, if I could take just one moment, uh, Chair Haggerty, I want to clarify and, and make sure that a statement was read correctly earlier for item 1.10.1 on the treasurer's report. 
Um, okay. I received a message that I stated that the treasurer's report was for January. Um, that treasurer's report was actually for February 28th, 2021, and no action was required on that item. I wanted to make it clear for the record. Item 1.11 consent docket. Uh, there are no items on the consent docket. Item 2.0 administration. Item 2.1, the following 32 TASB local policies are presented for first reading and for information only. Under sections E, instructions, and F, students. Okay. I have a motion. Um, there's no action for this item. Um, if there's any questions, they can be taken at this time. Okay. Any questions? No. All right, 3.1. Item 3.1, discussion and action. Sorry, I lost my place here for a moment. Discussion and action to approve full-time staff and faculty recruited in positions funded by the institutional budget. I hear a motion. Uh, move to approve. I have a second. Second. Call a question, Pam. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Mrs. Robles. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Ms. Nahera. Aye. Ms. Pena. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Okay, 3.2. Uh, item 3.2, discussion and action to approve full-time staff and faculty recruited in positions funded by grants and or contracts. There are no items, sir. Item 3.3, information items, resignations. No action is required. Item 4.1, discussion and action on waiving the acceptance of pilot funds in the amount of $4,026.67 from the Housing Authority of the City of El Paso to be re redirected to the YWCA for the provision of daycare services to <coughs> EPCC students. We've had a question on this uh, year to year. Uh, is our legal uh, representative on the uh, line there? Yes, sir. Uh, are we to vote for this or are we not to vote for this? Uh, in years past, we were not supposed to vote on it. But I understand that Ms. Sanchez brought it up last year. So what is the uh, direction of our legal counsel? Uh, Chair Haggerty, my recommendation would be for the board to take action and the action would be of approved to waive the acceptance of the pilot funds. Okay, so I hear a motion. Yes, sir, Carmen Graham, take motion. I have a second. Second. Call the question, Pam. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Mrs. Robles. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. <coughs> Ms. Najera. Aye. Ms. Pena. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item 5.0, phys physical facilities, there are none. Item 6.1, discussion and action on the approval of the Clint ISD PTEX interlocal agreement. I have a motion. Yes, sir. Move to approve. Second the motion. Any questions? Call the question, Pam. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Mrs. Robles. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Ms. Najera. Hi. Ms. Mia. Aye. 
Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item 7.0, student services, there is none. Item 8.0, community services, there are none. Would the board like to go into executive session at this time? I believe so. We have a few, uh, few things to discuss, so go ahead and uh, put us into an executive session. The Board of Trustees may conduct an executive or closed session pursuant to Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code for one or more of the following reasons. One, consultation with its attorney to seek or receive legal advice or consultation regarding pending or contemplated litigation or for any purpose authorized by law. Two, discussion about the value or transfer of real property. Three, discussion about a prospective gift or donation. Four, consideration of specific personnel matters. Five, discussion about security personnel or devices. Or six, discussion of certain economic development matters. The board may also announce that it will go into executive session on any item listed on this agenda if the subject matter is permitted for a closed session by provisions of chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code. Any vote regarding these items shall be taken in open session. Discussion with the board's legal counsel regarding legal update of EEOC charges and lawsuits pending against EPCC pursuant to section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code. Discussion with the board's legal counsel regarding update of the implementation of employment policies and procedures pursuant to section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code. Okay, this is Judge Haggerty. We're back into a uh, regular session. Uh, I do want to uh, notify the public and everyone uh, that associated with the college. Our next meeting will be on April the 28th, four o'clock for our finance and what, is it, what do we call it? Facilities and finance. Facilities and finance meeting and 5.30 for the board meeting. So, uh, Everybody stay safe. Uh, Dr. Surratt is going to try to work on something to where we might be able to do our meeting next next month a little different, but we'll let everybody know what's going on. Do I have a motion for adjourn? So move. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We'll see y'all next. We'll see y'all next month. Thank you, stay board safe. members, so much. Everyone stay safe. Thank you so much. Good, Good to see you all. Good night. Good night. We'll see you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>